Welcome to Kaiser Power Electronics. My name is Mess Barnkop. Today we are taking a look at this APC Uninterruptible Power Supply Unit. It is the model number SMX3000. It is a part of the Smart UPS series. This is the Smart UPS X 3KVA. It is a 19 inch rack unit which comes in a two unit configuration where we have the inverter in the one unit and then we have a external battery compartment in the second unit. This is the model SMX3000 which is at the bottom here. So we have an input voltage of 200 and 230 volt AC, 60 amp and it can output a maximum 2700 watt or 3000 VA. The front has a battery compartment. We have a fan out and we have a small status display here with a few buttons that we have something like charging and battery charging, warning and battery dead. And then we have some kind of yeah, menu we should probably browse through as there's errors, escape and return. At the back we have our 16 amp IEC input plug and the output groups is group 1, 2 and 3. Over here we have the slot for a communication module. It has USB and also has a serial connection. We have some kind of alarm output and we have external battery connection. It seems to have some kind of lid. It's secured with the 10 screws and while I remove these 10 screws I would like to ask you to help me boost my channel here. And there is a few simple ways you can do this. The first thing is like the videos. That really helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Then there is leave a comment. I will answer every comment that is placed on this video. And then at last, yeah, please do subscribe to the channel if you think I am worth subscribing to. And what really helps is, of course, sharing my content with your friends on forums that you find relevant in social media groups and such. So thank you if you consider helping me build my channel. So let's see what's underneath here. That just seems so empty with such a large battery compartment. And then again we have quite a lot of empty space up here in the front as well. But uh, yeah, some nice uh, big magnetic parts here. We have a heatsink tunnel, some filtering. We have our battery connection running all the way down here. Seems there's actually some kind of connector for battery up in the front. So maybe that's how the battery, okay, that's how the battery pack here connects via the front. I will just get the power electronics out of the chassis and we can take a closer look. All electronics is out of the cabinet and everything was primarily secured with these small stupid push-ins self-locking plastic things. Uh, really makes it hard to disassemble something when it's in three dimensions it's been secured with this. We have our main input plug sitting here. We have our main filtering. We have some MOVs and TVS sitting here for transient over voltage protection. We even have a small spark gap. From here we also have a filter capacitor and then we have five relays which sits both in respect to the input and the output. Battery connection here is the internal at the back and then it is in parallel with the front connector which goes over here which were for the okay this is external battery connector this is internal battery connector. We also notice it has some signal wiring going to this board here and that has a wire going over to the group 1 to 3 output board which has three relays. So each group can be shifted by this board which seems to be some kind of battery controller and it's nice to see that for a board which says over here APC by Snyder Electric power board 2012 that we see a nice ISA board. Always nice with a flashback to the good old days of home computing. The front panel, the front panel just sits with a flat band connector and actually has two connections, or two cables. We have a small one here, just seems to be, 
maybe it's just the arrow LED that actually goes separate and all the other stuff goes in the flat cable. The display here is actually far more advanced than it uh, just seemed to be. It does have an LCD display which makes sense from the up, down and return button and the escape button. And the single button we have up here which is the on off switch has a separate cable. Has some small controllers and it's worth noticing this says 2009. So the control panel is actually three years older than the power board. The board is a four layer board so there is no way to track the mains voltage over to the DC bus. But yeah, it's not hard to tell that it would run somewhere over here. We have our DC bus sitting over here that is rated 450 volt DC, 680 microfarads. We have two nice lots and doctors. We have two separate bridges. So probably one for battery charging, one for output inverter. Or it could be that it's some of the proprietary um, topologies that APC has developed that it can actually freewheel on the bridge and then use the internal diodes for battery charging. Quite exciting stuff that I only recently learned about when doing one of the other APC teardowns. So please do share any knowledge you have of how this works in the comments because it really helps both me and other viewers learning much more about the power electronics. On the output side we have a nice big uh, Cornell Duplier MKP capacitor. I love these capacitors. They are some of the best that you can get and use in resonant capacitors for Tesla coils. So I love to actually see those being used. It's uh, pretty rare to see those. It's always something like VMA or IC link or stuff like that. The main controller sitting at the main power board is a STM32 from ARM. And over on the what I assume is the battery controller, we have a Texas Instruments TMS 320F28. On the side of the main PCB, we have a housekeeping power supply and somebody drew up a pretty rare Pepe, it seems. That is for sure some kind of frog here with yeah, eyes, mouth, nose, head curvatures, the mouth and the body. That just seems too obvious to not be a coincidence. The back side of the power board contains a pretty huge surprise. It's a complete silk screen. We have everything here. And everything is of course mounted mirrored on the other side. From here we can actually tell everything according to the schematic if it was that Snyder Electric even put out the schematics for these units, which they don't do. The data sheet of all the switches reveals that what I mentioned earlier, that the, this is most likely one of APC's special driving topologies where they take advantage of the built-in diode. These are GP4063D IDPTs and there is seven of them which is a very odd number for a inverter and converter. They are rated for 600 volt DC. They can do 48 amp continuous at 100 degrees die temperature and 96 amp at 25 degrees. They are rated for 200 amp pulsed, which makes these IDPTs pretty nice to reuse in something like re resonant inverters in Tesla coils and induction heating. The diode is also rated for the same 48 amp. And that again tells us that this part is specific chosen for being used freewheeled to uh, do battery charging through the same IDPTs and just take advantage of the very large power handling built in diode. The overall build quality is very high. It is also a 19 inch rack unit. It is meant for server rooms. We have some very high quality components sitting here. These are current transformers. And just overall, um, the, the whole build quality and the 105 degree capacitors throughout the, the board and has a lot of quality check marks all over. A lot of um, writing by the people who assembled this. So everything is double checked and really seems to, um, yeah, there was some effort put into building this unit. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about how these 19 inch rack server uninterruptible power supplies are built and yeah, enjoyed the video. 
So, until next time, see ya!